Nevermind. Welcome to the channel guys. On today's episode you see us doing some bullshit. I'm gonna see light that's it. Do I need to keep going or is it somehow, yeah? Will it pull out? It's into that. This keep side going. of the cylinder now. Keep going. Stop. Alright, keep going. <laughs> somehow. Well I didn't know what it was doing, it was pinching. Boom. I know, I'm trying. You messed me up. Off with your head. All right. That's how you get it out when you break the bolt out of the end of that pin. Well, that's how you get it out without taking the tire off anyway. There's enough room in here to swing that thing. So here's that cylinder that's inside of the D17 rear end. Uh, the reason we got it off is because the hose and stuff was leaking inside of there. And I'll show you that hose, but then in the process, this got broke. Um, I don't know, we think it was weak because we didn't do much. I didn't do much, I broke it. So Anyway, I didn't do much to uh, <laughs> break it. It didn't take much, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, uh, we're going to get that out. Uh, might need to give her a little give her a little heat but we'll see how that goes first attempt failed miserably of course why not these are harbor freight tools that we're using so we drilled it out to the next size and we're hoping hey I also gave her a little bit of heat warmed it up with the torch there and Gave us every advantage that we could get. Oh, that thing was in there, wasn't it? Like no joke. Yeah, it was. Well, it's, you know, the National Pipe tapered threads, so it was in there. Oh, that's hot. All right, so now we got to clean it out and uh, find a, another fitting for that. So, while Bob's working on his project, I need that tractor right not not the 19 the one behind it the 190 right there so should be able to fire up the 7060 in the 7060 with 301 and be able to get it out i hope i've got the jumper cables here because i'm sure the battery is dead in that thing so we remembered that we had this thing it's supposed to be up to the task <laughs> It's got 2,000 amps, it says. I, we don't know if it's supposed to be flashing like that or not. I'll be. You know, that's actually pretty impressive because that battery was dead. I'd say it was worth a hundred bucks. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> well, all right, this thing's fired up. So this is what I came up for. As you can see, the channel's about to start getting shitty.
Okay, so the story with this is what I'm doing here. Two years ago, this was my planting tractor, and the radiator sprung a leak. So then we put the radiator on there, and there must have been a mouse nest or something in the radiator. Because shortly after I fixed it, it started getting warm and blowing uh, antifreeze out of the overflow. So I shut it down, went and got Frankie, and finished planting that year. And um, since then, we've been tractors this and big tractors and it's the first time that I've gotten it back out but here's your problem right here well, that'll do stuff in there huh so I clean out this little mini oil cooler here try to flush out the system the best I can um, put it back together and see if it runs right what else can you do without digging into it all crazy and um, yeah we'll just keep an eye on it and, uh, I'll kind of make this accessible so that I can check it every now and again and I think we'll be good to go simple enough well here we go this is the clutch pack off of that 200 chassis that we got where the engine came out of, that engine right there. So I guess it's only fitting that we use parts from it to fix this, right? Let me go get my light and I'll show you what's going on in here. So do you guys remember when Tom was pulling that uh, 20,000 pound wagon full of soybeans last year with his tractor? You always gotta be playing with your toys. There's not a camp tractor around for all of them. Well, this is what happened when he threw it into high. It pretty well grenaded itself. Uh, let me get in here to see these teeth. If the camera will focus. See those teeth? They are not uh, pointed or the same length anymore. <laughs> um, look at look at this. That's how far shimmed that thing was. So I'm sure that the high side was metal on metal. Like no question. We'll see once we get it apart, but I'm, I, I, I'd bet a hundred bucks because that's, that's beyond where you should safely adjust it. But that's what happens. Instead of the clutch plaques slipping a little bit, it just grabbed metal on metal and, uh, like I said, grenaded itself. So we're going to see what's inside of this one. Okay, so this is what we found when we got them apart. These are the ones out of the 200. These are supposed to be within 117 thousandths to 123 thousandths. And you can see we're at 120, so we're well within specs, about halfway through the life of them. Which, that's good. Um, this was one that came out of Bob's tractor here. I was, this side doesn't look too bad. Check this side out. Not much pad left, and in spots there's no pad left. Um, these are 105 thousandths. The thickest one that I found was 110. Um, not in the best shape inside of there. They were over adjusted and beat up a bit that this one was the plate that looked the best as far as that goes but if you look at it like this look at it, it's warped very clearly warped uh, these are what the other ones look like nice and worn down you can feel that groove too with your fingers so it got fixed over here that looks good doesn't it 
another seal that needs to get replaced. Uh, metal shavings all over. Metal shavings. You see that blue silicone? That blue silicone was everywhere. Uh, all inside of these gear passages for the oil. Um, kind of odd, but new parts, new used parts are in here. Right now we're soaking the um, the uh, shims, trying to get them cleaned up, and it'll go back together. All right, moving on to the next leg of this little adventure. This is the uh, manure spreader that I got last fall for pretty darn cheap. Um, knew it had some issues. My brother was using it, and he noticed that this was uh, the main issue. You see the lights are there now. In order to do this right, we've got to take all the gears out. Um, I come back inside of here. I don't know, somebody tried in here, but cut all that out, get all the augers out of there, rebuild the the front there. Quite a process we gotta do to get it fixed right. But come on guys, you know I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, we're just gonna get this thing back in the field. I'll, uh, I got the torch in there. I'm gonna start by torching the back side of these bolts out. I got some metal up here. I'll show you how I'm going to accomplish that. Hey, look at that. See this foam again. <laughs> holding that in there. The back one is not rotted out, so it's holding that back. They're from going back. This is holding it from going forward. It'll work. Good enough. Uh, we're gonna go turn this thing on, make sure everything works. However, I think it'll work just fine for what I need it to do. I think we're good to go. Okay, it is all back together. New seals, like new hand clutch. This is nice. <laughs> Bob's happy. He got the tin work on there. Isn't that nice? I actually want to see this. D17 diesel, boys. <laughs> anyway, new seals in there, new seals in the back, new hose for the lift arms, new weight bracket, still needs a little bit of modification. What else? Can I be on that was that was the gist of it. Ten. The hand clutch was the big one. Ten. Here's my daughter wants to say hi. Where'd you go, Lexi? There we go. And we got to do 10 yet. Get off. 
six of them eventually. So you guys saw how that thing started. It uh, probably doesn't have the best compression. We, we never have tested it, but it can't be right. Um, so we saw, we watch, uh, what is it, Project Farms. And he does a bunch of tests on stuff. If you guys haven't seen him, um, he's not endorsed by anybody or anything. He just wants to show you if stuff works. And uh, he did a compression test on one of his. It was a Ford 5000, if we remember right. Um, one of the cylinders was down 165 PSI, the other ones were right at like 185, 190. And uh, he said he barely used the tractor, so he's gonna give this stuff a shot. And he used it, come back, and um, all the cylinders were right around 195. So then he did an update video a year later where he was draining the oil, and uh, he did a compression test then, and they were all right there at 195. He said, well, I'm gonna put this stuff back in. So. Uh, next year that engine will be getting overhauled hopefully, but this year $14 for this bottle. We figured it wasn't gonna wasn't gonna hurt anything. What the hey? See what happens. So after he plows with it and everything we'll see if it starts a little bit better So here we are we did the tin work look we can do stuff Needs to be uh, Ground a little bit more and finish there around the hump um, also plug some holes, need to be ground down. That still needs to be ground down. He's got D17 diesel side tin on there. Looks like a 17, right? I don't know how much more stock he can get. <laughs> he drove it for the first time. How's that hand clutch, Bob? Uh, nice? Yeah. Like new? Hey, that plow being on the back makes the front end so light that when I got screws in, the, the front end started doing some wobble crazy shit. Because so <laughs> I put the weight bracket on it, put some weight on it, I bet. <laughs> um, so this is the next video, guys. We're going to be working on plows. Um, also, he's going to be plowing with this tractor this year. He wanted to keep all of his hydraulics and everything on this one, you know, just so that he could use it on the farm. So he gets the four bottom. <laughs> but this is where I'm going to call this a video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Um, like I said, the next one we're going to be working on plows and getting everything ready for that. And, uh, Yep. Hope you guys all enjoyed this and hope to catch you on the next one.